Okay. So I've ordered a, a powered. Uh, it's actually a powered x-axis drive. However, I'm going to use it on my Z. And it, the ones for the bridge port. Um, it's only one I could find that I think it'd fit nicely, sort of here. Um, that's my my idea. By taking off, let's take this screw out, which is the grub screw. Take off the wheel. Replace the grub screw so I don't lose it. Place out of the way. Then what I'm left with is this. This is a graduated um, metric dial. The only thing I can find is one Allen key there. Smaller. Just sick of winding and winding the sandal every time I want to go up and down. The, the knee on this is like over a foot, like yeah, 300 mil or whatever. In fact, it's more than that, I think. And if you're going from the bottom up to the top, it's quite a slog. And my poor old shoulder is duff. Hmm, that come undone easy. It wasn't even tight. Try spinning that round in case there's a shuttle in it that's going to drop out. There we go. Mm. That's not good news. That's not good news because the the unit that I've bought is not going to fit on there. I was hoping to do this without taking that shaft out. Well, then that shaft's got a bevel gear on it and drives on a bevel gear on the screw at the bottom. Hence, to screw the knee up and down at right angles. Um, and I was hoping I could do all the work out here without taking it to bits. But I don't think that's going to be possible. And that shoulder unless, unless I make a collar that fits on there I've got to drill this no matter what I've got to drill at least two if not three holes in here uh, make an adapter plate to hold this um, power drive unit so I knew that that would have to be done but that is bigger than the needle roller bush this is 19 and a quarter the bush that comes with it is a 20 mil so that would read remaking anyway I think the the outside diameter of the bush that fits in the needle roller bearing of the power drive is from what a guy was saying what it 20 well it's 24 or 25 millimeter it might have been 25 millimeter but that's nearly 31 so it's not going to fit on there I and mean, ultimately they'd take that off and turn that down and then the whole thing would fit over it but if i make an adapter that's as thick as that then my bush will fit out here and I can do all my work here 
I've still got enough length on this shaft to probably get my wheel back on because it's a must that I put the wheel back on at the end I think it'll do it I've ordered it and it's going to be I think next Friday it's Saturday at the moment so we're looking at nearly a week probably a week before it gets here with all the new lockdown that's just coming tonight I suppose it might take longer until it gets here I can't actually start working it out I've measured the depth of it I've got enough depth with this wound to the bottom the knee I've got 8 inches between the centre line of the shaft and the base of my um, cabinet width wise I think it's going to be ok I've got 60 mil from the underside of that to the centre of this shaft uh, so that should be ok because I don't think it's as big as that it, it sort of comes round and down yeah yeah I'm going to have to make it a collar that fits on there that's drilled and tapped to accept this power drive and some counterboard holes in it to drill and fix to the to the knee obviously I didn't want to drill it if I didn't have to but I, I have to I've no option it's got to be done wind this in a bit let you see better that's better yeah it's got to fit here so that that one's drilling that's all either, t either two or three holes and uh, tapping I don't know what size I'd say M5 but I suppose M5 Allen screws are quite strong not going to drop off but a pinch I could get M6 in I mean they've got enough meat I think yeah what have we got zero eight point five mil is that flange gap there that that uh, edge six seven eight yeah I'm pushing it a bit I to do a six mil thread in there I'm better with five it's only a four point two tap in it tapping drill three M fives in there I mean I can wind this by hand it's not the easiest going up but I think it'll be alright yeah ok that's about as far as I can go then uh, just to uh, bob on a little bit of progress on this power drive uh, it is a big bulky unit it's a lot bigger than I thought I couldn't get dimensions of it and I just worked on watching YouTube videos of people fitting them and like gauging the size of the hands to the size of what they were holding and just got a rough idea I was probably inch and a half out it's a shame that it had this bottom on it because uh, as somebody's already remarked on um, engineering forum that the knee on this I mean this Tom Senior has got a huge work area um, you see you've got your knee that winds right down and that that cast in there goes all the way right to the bottom of there this disappears because this is hollow under here so that goes right down over that uh, when you've got it down there you've got quite a distance of work area uh, in here that work area by fitting this motor uh, it is going to reduce and it's going to reduce by about two and three quarter inches however with this wound right down to where it's going to be with the new motor on from the bed to the underside of the quill I have still got uh, just over 13 inches I think it's let's have a look Try not move camera quickly. I think it's uh, 335. I'll have 335. Uh, originally it was 420 from the bed to the underside of the quill. Was 420. It's now going to be uh, 335. I've lost 85 mil. Um, but I've still got that. Now I'm not going to be putting any car engine blocks on here. And stuff. I mean, it is only a, a medium to small size milling machine, 
it's not something that you'd want to be doing mega engineering on heavy engineering should i say um i mean the beauty with this thing is that even with that right down you've still got your you've still got this as well so you know it's a double whammy really uh but with that right up and that right down and with the new motor on i'm losing 85 mil i can live with that i've never used it with it right to the bottom in fact i wound it down tonight to do some proper measuring i've never ever had it that low in all things i've done i've never done anything that needed uh, a 13 inch gap there you know so i'm okay so what problems have i got right i've got to mount this thing onto here and you've only got this small amount here i mean ideally i'd take this whole thing off and i'd take this shaft out and I'd do something with this because this is part of the shaft. It's not a, it's 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 machined onto it. That doesn't come off. That. So you've got what comes with it, and I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to use it, but it is a nice thing. This, because it's meant to go as a an x-axis drive. That's what it's for, and I'm using it for Z. So that. I was thinking of boring the hole in the centre a bit bigger so it'll go over that collar and milling somehow this out here all the way around leaving just that as my fixing I could then drill maybe three five mil holes and counter bore them into there and then fix that onto there that's my idea. Or, uh, I've got some alloy plate, some big alloy plate, or I could get some steel plate, and make a new fitting for there. But that's such a nice thing, and it's got it's got the bib on it, hasn't it, which stops swarf getting in. So it's probably a good idea to use that. Only trouble is, the back of it's sort of open, so when I've milled it all away, there'll be some gaps in it, which you'll see from ab above. So maybe I need some filling and painting so that you couldn't see it, so it looked like it were all one casting. I'm sure it's strong enough. Next thing, so you've got a needle roller bearing in there, and it's purely for support. It doesn't do anything really, and that's bush fits in it. Uh, and this drive unit obviously uh, goes onto there and is driven. And that has to be locked onto the shaft, which is something I'll come to later. But that bush is imperative. It does go in there. It's only a guide. As I say, there's no load on it. But it's too big for there. It is 25mm outside diameter. And it's 19.85 inside diameter. I need it to be. 25 outside obviously to fit the needle roller and I need it 19 mil inside diameter so I need to make a new one of them I've touched that with a file on edge and it does file but it is quite hard the only thing I've got is mild steel bar or I mean I have got some uh, I've got mild steel bar I've got alloy or I've got a piece of stainless and that would do it. I've actually got a piece of stainless bar there that I could use. That would do it. It'd be tough enough for a guide, wouldn't it? Uh, I mean, I have got some titanium in here. I could, but I don't think there's any point in making it super tough because it's got no side loads on it. You've got to bear in mind this thing is going to be fixed. That's going to be fixed with those fixing holes to the... Um, side of the knee via <clears throat> via that so that ends up like that so that's purely a guide that's all it is, it does nothing just a free running needle roller so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to make it out of stainless uh, and when I've done that I, I'll work out how to fit this and I'll come back I'm going to be doing this video in, in quite a few stages I've had this running, it's quite it's quite good, but I won't say it's awesome. It, it's very worry, woo, 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 which means to me the speed of that's going to be up and down like a yo-yo. It's not going to be accurate. 
However, that doesn't really matter. All I'm wanting to do is be able to wind that from low down to high up without me winding away on this handle. This will go back on when it's finished, that'll fit back on. So apart from the great big bulky, ugly, monstrous motor hanging down, uh, it's going to be the same as. And I'm hoping... I was hoping that I could put it all back to standard if I wanted to, but there is something that should have stopped me doing that. And that is, is this. Because that is the uh, graduated marker wheel for there. And on the bridge part, that's meant for you take off the huge collar and it fits back on. And it fits back on behind there in that gap there. Um, and it's as big as that wheel, so it's a huge dial. I was looking at buying one, but uh, oof, they, were, they weren't cheap, and all the cheap ones were from China, and it was going to take a month and a half, two months to come. So I thought, no, I want to get on with this. So this is what will be on, and obviously it's going to be smaller. So that's got to fit onto there, which means all that's got to be bored to fit. A little bit on that in, internal there, and then that. And I think this will be cut off don't think we'll have that anymore then that's got to be bored out because that is way down smaller than the shaft that's going over so that's going to be uh, machined out which i'll do with a, a a boring tool and lathe I'll find some way of holding that i don't know how but yeah but that's all for later i want to get this back bracket sorted first which probably use, means using miller machine if i'm going to mill it out although i could probably cut the sides of it out with the with the bandsaw it, that'd do it easy because it's aluminium um, and then sort of put it on mill and finish it I don't know I don't know we'll see so first thing is make a bush so I'll do that and then come back see where we are with it right I've made the spacer that's the original one uh, and that's the new one That one was uh, no good because it was too big on there. Um, so this one slightly smaller. That's for there. It's not a tight fit, it doesn't need to be. But yeah, all works. Gets in there. quite happy with that so tomorrow I'll get on with some more of it right I'll do it again uh, this is the self not self centre it's the, the centre finder it's only a cheap thing out of art but uh, it comes with all sorts of little fingers with it and stuff uh, and I've just self centred that centre found that Very impressed. That's the back side of the bridge part X axis. I don't know. It's one of them. It's one of them, but off a bridge part. Uh, and I need to bore it so it'll go over this bush here. Which I think it needs about two mil out. I'm going to do some measuring now, but. I've, I've got it centred, that's just about perfect, but do we go for even better? using a fly cutter I'm trying to take off something ridiculously low I 
empty. Right, I'll set it again. I have to keep just mucking this through a little bit because uh, I ain't got a boring bar. So I'm using a fly cutter. Right, so now that's bored and fits onto there. Which it didn't before. But it doesn't go that way, it goes that way. And I've decided to use this as opposed to making a a, a, a piece of uh, stock and fitting it on there, is that this has got the nice shroud to it. So when you're using it and your milling machine's chucking crap everywhere, it's got a bit of a shield, hasn't it? You've got all that as a shield. So my plan is to... Well, I cut down that uh, holder and I hung the unit in position and uh, I'm still not happy that I'm going to lose three inch of my, um, my lower knee when I go down because uh, that motor hits the bottom because it's sort of nearly nine inches. But there... It'll go right down, I'm sure it will. I'm going to take measure. Have a look. I have a funny feeling. Oh, I'm pushing zoom again. Get out of it, you idiot. Right. I'm centre of that. It's only three, less than three and a half inches from that centre line to the bottom. And I've got six inches. With that right down, there's six and a quarter, I think it is, from the centre of that to the base of that. So if I could fit that there, I've got loads of room. Will it look stupid? I mean, it's got to look stupid anyway. Because it's an old machine with something new on it. But forgetting about that, if I put that there, I've undone this lever, it's only on a roll steel pin, that's where it should be. I've undone it, and I can alter that roll steel pin, and mill a new slot, if I can get that, no, I can't get it off to show you, but that lever could be there. And I can't see that anything had been with it. I don't think I'd have a problem with anything. And that would be, that would be like, if that were there, it'd be that way, neutral, that way as in up and down, the on off switch is there, the rapid switch is there, my wheel, oh, will that still go on? Well, of course it's got to still go on, hasn't it? Wouldn't have made any difference whether it hung down or not. Right, that's the wheel back on in position to make it look like a Miller machine again. Hmm, starting to wonder. With this collar, I can fix this collar round here anywhere I want. I mean, there's going to be a lot of weight on it. But people do hang them at a funny angles. So I can't see how it wouldn't work. I can't see alt casting smashing. The only problem I've got is under there, there's the screw for the X axis. And that's the speed control knob, which I've removed. In that position, I'd say that's pretty much bang on. Maybe it needs to go up a right little bit, just a fraction up. I could put a smaller speed dial on there, a smaller wheel on there, because the one that comes with it is a big fat thing, is that. I can put a shallower one on than that, look. I mean, look at recess in there. I could even cut that one down so it went further down. But I have got some smaller ones, it's only a quarter. Hmm, I'm starting to think this is the way to go. It's going to look, probably look better when it's finished and I'm going to have the full, that, not that I ever do it, but I'll have the full knee, which will give me, what is it? Come on, old, old man. Uh, 13, 14, 15. I'll probably have a full from the bottom of the, where am I must start again? From the bottom of the quill, under there, to the bed. If I use it with that vertical, I'm going to have 13 inch. If I turn it like that, I'm going to have about 16 to 16 and a half inches of knee adjustment. 
and it'd be a shame to reduce that one it because if I have that hanging down like old Mark said I'm going to actually make this machine into a substandard machine and I'm all for improving machines not making them worse and that would make it worse we've just answered our own question haven't we this is what we're going to do so on I go I'll uh, I'll get that fixed. Obviously, there's things, there's issues. Because, hang on, I'll pause this and start it and show you. Right, so, I've cut that and I've dressed it up on the belt sander. It goes on there, which now we know is going to be like that. Don't make any difference to me fixing it. Everything f still fits. So the only thing is, is to make it look nice, is there's all those webs which I talked about earlier, because of all that crap I've cut off. So I think my next job is scratch that black up and get car body filler out and fill that all the way around and then rub it all down, prime it and paint it. And I'm going to paint that the... Um, the Tom Senior Green, which I have got some. It's a bit of a matte finish, but it doesn't matter. But it'll look better. So that's what I'm going to do. Next job, get that sorted out and fitted. Probably going to take me a day to do that because of the filler. So I will come back as I go along. Right, just um, a quick update. That's the casting cut down, as I showed earlier. Uh, and I've drilled where the holes are going to go uh, one, two, three, four some are going to be six mil and some are going to be five because it's getting close to edge here uh, so the webbing obviously it, it, it would have made it weak at the back and because uh, the holes come out one hole comes out there uh, they get the close and some of them are in this webbing so I've filled that with JB Weld liquid metal uh, and the remainder of this I'm just going to mix up the old uh, car body filler and I'm going to create this into a uh, hopefully a nice shape so you can't tell that it's webbed and then repaint it. So that was just a quick update. I'll, uh, I'll do another little bit to this once I've done all this filler. But it's coming on, okay. Right. Nearly there. So, we've finally got it fitted. And I hope it doesn't have to come back off again now. Um, that's bolted. It only has two bolts because behind there, there's two rolled steel pins that stick out from the, uh, the back plate and it's located. Uh, the two bolts are just to hold the thing in place. So, yeah, they're in. I've greased everything up. And this I had to bar out to three quarters because the original one 
This was only half inch, so I'm assuming a bridge part must have a much smaller shaft than that. Uh, so I've drilled it and then I've, <clears throat> and I've put two dimples in there. There's one there and one there. Some might say, well, why aren't you keyway dicks? There is no keyway on this shaft, but I mean, I could have, I suppose with a Dremel really carefully done a keyway and made a key, but then I'd have had to add that broached again because uh, the keyway that were in that is now gone because it's barred away. So I've got two grub screws in there. And in defence of it, if anybody starts griping about that, uh, look at that. That's how the hand wheel holds on, on a Tom Senior. Uh, they don't have a keyway, they just hung two grub screws with a dimple drilled in the shaft. And I thought, well, if it's good enough for that, it's good enough for me. So basically, all that there is to do now is, well, there isn't, there's, there's some other jobs to do, but that goes on. And I, I've, I've made sure that that isn't tight in. Uh, I actually put a clip on there and pulled it back. It comes with a load of washers, but the washers are not big enough because um, it comes with a packet of washers, but they're not big enough to go on that shaft. So they're no good, they're shims. So what I did was I packed it back till it, till it, 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 it grabbed just right. Uh, and I've had these screws in and I've run it dry and it runs great. So I've stripped it down to grease it uh, and put it back just to show what I've actually done. I'll have to put the phone down. I'll just nip that other grub screw up and come back. Right, so the grub screws are in. So that's sort of the finished part of that. And there is a, a, a collar that screws on there to locate the dial, which is supposed to be the full size of that. I may still order one of those, but the only job left to do is to machine that to fit on there and cut some of this down sorry some of this down it's too it's too thick but when it's on it's going to look big zero because uh, it's not the full size on that they do do a dial i mean that's 2.5 i believe yeah, it's 2.5 full one, so it's 2.5 millimetres per full rev. And it's also your zero, isn't it? Because then you go 0.25. Um, and they do do a bridge part one with those dimensions that fits everything on here. Go buy one, I don't know. I'll have a look and see. Might order one. I'm thinking of making. <clears throat> that plastic cover come just to protect the uh, crown wheel in transit and it'll fit perfectly on there so I'm thinking of boring all in that and pulling that over there to cover that up and then put the wheel back on so it'd be like that when it's done well it won't be like that when it's done so we'll give that a go That needs trimming down now, so I can get the nut on. <clears throat> That's just the cap, that protective plastic cap. Just um, cut a hole in the middle of it. So that needs trimming, so I can get this uh, this nut to go on here and then we're just about done
a bit noisy and I think there's a problem with the clutch in here. It's not always engaging properly. I might have to take it all off and pull it apart and see what's up with it. At the moment, it's behaving great. Yep, I'm happy as punch. And as for the power of it not being good enough for the Z axis, I've got to say that's rubbish because. I set it going earlier and I put all my body weight on that bed um, and I don't think I'm going to put out as heavy as my body weight on there and it didn't slow down as it were going up I don't know about half speed and it didn't slow down so it is I think they're getting the figures a bit mixed up when they do these um, these Chinese things it's saying 135 inch pounds uh, that's, um, that's something like 11 newton meters which is nothing so I think they've got the figures wrong anyway it's working but I do think I'm going to have to take it to pieces to find out what's wrong with this clutch the clutch doesn't always engage and it must be in here because there's there's a freewheeling action like that's now freewheeling so if I want to wind the bed up I can I can wind the bed up and down manually so it it's uh, it, 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 that's obviously released because it's not driving the motor. If you turn the power off and engage it, and then try and turn it, it's really hard because you're turning all the gear into this, and you're not meant to because you're turning a crown wheel onto a pinion, which you should never do. A pinion drives a crown wheel, and not really the other way around. Annoying car diffs it does, but. It's not a good thing to do. Okay, so that's the end of the video for the uh, the Z-axis power feed on a Tom Senior. I've no doubt it'll fit any other. How much was it? It cost me £139 for that. Um, the only thing left to do, which I haven't done, is limit switches. I might just add a little video on the end showing that. Which is imperative, they've got to go on, because if you ever, I don't know, put it on up and your phone rang and you were answering the phone and you got distracted, you know, you could smash it. Or so some serious damage. But everything's worked out lovely. Absolutely superb. Okay, thanks for watching. That's it, finished, completely done, all done, see how long it lasts, I'm not happy about in here though, there is something that keeps jumping in here every now and then, it's like the clutch don't bite properly, I need to look into that, it's missing and hitting, it, most of the time it's fine, right thank you for watching, I'll uh, edit this and bang it all on YouTube, anyway I've had it all in bits and in here the shaft goes up and down and locks it into the pinion drive and it's a, a castellated uh, two halves that lock together uh, and it won't work in at all it, it was stiff as hell 
Uh, at first I thought there might have been a, a bird on a bush or something, but it, it wasn't. It, it, I think it was just an accumulation of the thickest, nastiest axle grease you've ever seen in your life. Really dark, horrible stuff. I've scraped all that out. I give it all a clean up with some GT85, uh, like WD-40. Dried that out and then I've re-greased it with some good stuff, some LM30 grease. So uh, it's working a lot better. So let's have a go. Um, I thought there was something wrong because that handle were loose. Yeah, you heard, you heard it clink, it latched in. I mean, it's a noisy thing. Horrible noisy thing. What it is, what it does, but it works. And you can drive it as slow or as fast as you want. That's about the slowest. One full revolution, that's 2.5 millimetres of lift on the table, so that's pretty fine. In fact, let's turn on, let's turn on what we're on. We're on Z, aren't we? Zero it. That's what it's doing in millimetres. And you can go from that to... That's maximum, which is what, yeah, and then you've got your overdrive. Yeah, so it's quite good. Um, no, that won't work, will it? That won't work because I've got my vice on it. We're going to bring it right up to the stop to show you that that does work, however. That's the stop. So that's that uh, direction. And then at the bottom, <clears throat> there's a stop. We'll, we'll take it right down. I've had to adjust the stop there is right down at the bottom. In fact, I've cut some of the spring off so it's shorter uh, to get it as low as I can. But this corner, this bottom section here, is on the bed when it cuts out or just before. So I am losing. Some suggested on model engineering side that I'd lose some of the knee height. Um, the way I had it upright, vertical, I lost quite a lot, like three inches of, it, of me. So, this way I'm not losing anywhere near as much. I need that to tie up and out of the way. See, so that's cut off there, and it's just starting to touch the rubber mat under there. Um, what have I lost? I've lost that. You're going to see that on a previous video that I've, I'm probably adding on, but yeah, I've lost inch and a quarter, maybe inch and a half at most. So yeah, I've lost the right little bit, but there's still a, a huge uh, gap there, so... It's great for anything I want to ever do, I think. So, this is definitely the last video to say thank you for anybody who's watching. Um, whether you like it or not, I don't know. You probably might well, I guess I do harp on so much. Uh, but is it worth it? Yeah, 139 quid, definitely worth it. it it's a shame that, um, you know, it, I had to take it all to pieces for it to work nicely. But it's a great thing, and it's going to save my shoulders. My right shoulder is absolutely knackered. Uh, it really is. I, when I'm using a 12-inch hacksaw and I'm cutting steel, 
the day after my shoulder kills me and that won't do me much good so that is it worth 139 quid for a new shoulder joint eh really chuffed with it anybody who thinks so, they want to do it do it can't go wrong bit of an ugly thing but what the hell it's done thank you for watching